Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 178. This episode is with the delightful gem of a human being known as Kieran Byrne. He's a former plasterer turned actor from Northern Ireland and one of my new favorite people. To say that I had a blast getting to know this man is an understatement. We talk about him being from Newry, working as a plasterer for over 20 years, what that job is exactly, moving from Northern Ireland to Nantucket, being inspired by the play Doubt to become an actor, how Catherine Zeta-Jones helped him propose to his wife, shaving his head to play Angus and Diary, how he got involved with the Irish Repertory Theatre in New York, and so much more. Kieran is a joy. You are going to love him. So let's just jump right into this one. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 178, with Kieran Byrne. Theme song time. He sends big hugs and kisses. He thinks you're brilliant. Oh, I love that guy. He's so great. He's actually how I came to know who you were because I think, uh, so it was actually, if I'm remembering correctly, um, the show must go online. That thing that yeah. the Irish rep did. Uh, you did the five minutes of heaven monologue. I did. Wow. So when I saw that, I was like, Ooh, followed immediately i was like this is really good because that movie's brian. great and you did a great oh. job oh brian thank you you know you're the only person that's ever ever mentioned that monologue to me. really so thank you outside of my mom and dad who talk to me about everything sure. but you know <laughs> i'm in good company then <laughs> oh my god thank you so honest to god brian thank you so because you, you know we were doing those things at the at the time and it was right at the beginning of the pandemic and and nobody really knew we were all just like making art to for to because it was all we could do and and yeah. you didn't know whether it was going out into a void or uh, just to hear you honest to god that's made my day now that you really has it's that, true that you said that so and it that's brought us here together it. today so <laughs> that's a, that's how long overdue the invite was for you to come on the show I was like <laughs> and he comes on he, eating his banana and looking like a pile of bad road <laughs> i don't know if mick had warned you prior unprofessional is my game i don't <laughs> there's if you're looking for a quality standard you've come to the wrong place my friend <laughs> oh my gosh it was funny here today too because i don't have my tech team with me today my tech team being my my two daughters of course <laughs> and, uh, of course so the the speakers on my computer i couldn't i couldn't find out how to put these in because <laughs> that, that weren't working so i i have you on my phone and a little tripod and these things in and it, oh, perfect man. it works <laughs> hey whatever works again it's there's all... no there's no quality standard <laughs> the things we can do now if we'd have thought we could do them two years ago we we never right? would have believed it it's bonkers you just never it just huh. goes show you just never know Never know, man. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Delighted to meet of you. Of course. Now, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure that's not a New York accent I hear. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> what part of Ireland are you from? Have I cursed yet? Is that what giving you away? You can. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> if you don't, I, I will. <laughs> my youngest daughter always says to me, now, Daddy, you know. You know, you like we know how you roll, but yeah. when you're on, you got to You got to keep this clean. You got to keep it. <laughs> she has not listen to the show. I hear <laughs> Brian's a nice man. You got to keep this clean. Mm. So <laughs> mm -mm -mm. the warnings were not put forth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm from uh, Newry County down north. Oh, Ireland. cool. That is very near to my favorite place in the entire world. What's your favorite place in the entire world? Tollymore National Forest. Tullymore Forest Park. Yeah. Yep. It's no way, it's man. My fa favorite place in the whole world. Yeah. Um, we we would go there practically every other weekend as kids. <sighs> it's my heart is still there. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's almost in Newcastle. There's a place yes. called Newcastle, and like it's on the way to Newcastle, or it's after New. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. I've been all over Ireland. That's another reason oh, I man. found out you're Irish, and I was like, on the show, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did a few years ago. It would have been probably I'm terrible at time. I'm going to say five, four or five years ago. I did a full like round trip 
of Ireland and Northern Ireland. So landed in Dublin, went all the way southwest to Port McGee, and then mm. to uh, I, so we went to the cliffs of Moore, but there was so much fog. I saw a cliff yeah. of Moore. <laughs> 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 so we did that. But then we did Galway, then Donegal, and then I did three days in Belfast, and then back down into Dublin before going into Hollyhead, taking the ferry. Oh, over. that's a terrific! That's a terrific it's, tour. Well, the greatest, but Tollymore That's- specifically, it, it yeah. was like a spiritual experience going into that place. And then just, yeah. oh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite place I've ever been. Oh, that's lovely. That makes me very happy to hear. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. It's close, close. So you're from there. That's pretty cool. What was that like? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. it was It was cool growing up there, man. Yeah, it, we didn't really know any anything else. It was, there was nobody sure. head, heading off to America or any, yeah. any lands, <laughs> any any exotic locales at the time. We were all sure. just in our own place and we stayed there. So, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was, it was nice. That's I mean, cool. there was a lot of other things happening. It was, it was the troubles sure. and, and that like, but sure. you know, the, the area was nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> physically, physically. It was physically, it was, it was nice. <laughs> the locale was lovely. Sure. <laughs> What kind of stuff were you into growing up? Pretty much the same as most most other kids at home. We um, played a lot of played a lot of fo- football, like soccer, nice. Irish Gaelic football. Sure. Uh, just being out being outside a lot. You were just outside sure. a lot. It's the you know now, now now if you like tell your kids to go outside, it's like, what what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> I didn't do anything. I didn't, true. Whereas with us, you got home and you were, I mean, you got your dinner and you, you went outside until it was dark and then, you know, you went in. Yep. So yep. Just outside a lot, running around, hanging out, talking, playing games, things sure. like that. Noth- nothing really, just simpler times. I think about that a lot. Like when I think about the old West and things like that, it's like on the, on the getting food side of it and the disease and pestilence, it was harder. Sure. Modern yeah. medicine. But also yeah, yeah, it was so simple because you had to worry about I need to eat. And that was it. There was like very little <laughs> social was... structure, you know, it that was it. nice. <laughs> Get out of the house. Go. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was... it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. There's no preconceived notions, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, sure, if you get a cold, you're probably going to die. But other than that, <laughs> it's a give and take. <laughs> Try, trying to find ways to skip school and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know? exactly. The usual <laughs> truant this, behavior. This, yeah. <laughs> Little seances in the, in the spare time. I get it. Yeah. I get Things it. Things that if, if we caught our kids doing them now, we'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah, ah, exactly. <laughs> I never did that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is it true you did construction before doing acting? Yeah, I was a plasterer for 22 years, Brian. What? How do you yeah. get in, how do you get into that? Just because it's there? That that I mean, yeah, that is actually uh just because it's there is is definitely a, a very real thing, particularly when I when I was growing up in Ireland, you you, you did things a lot because they were there too. I mean, sure. I know we're saying it in jest to, to a degree, but it, that was the the truth in the seventies and eighties. You, you did a lot of things just because they were, they were there. You, you, went, you know, I went into the trades. It was what was, it was what was expected of me in, sure. in a, in a, in a way. And uh, my grandfather was a, was a lifelong plasterer. My uncle oh, wow. was a lifelong plasterers. And, uh, and it's a, it's an honorable trade. It's a, it's a, it's a good trade. I'm, I'm really, really happy that I, that I did it. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, the, the, the options and the, the variety and the, well, tell me what you would like to do. Wasn't really a thing back sure. then and there <laughs> was, was what it is now. But, uh, but yeah, I started maybe when I was 11 or 12 years old with my granddad, like kind of running around carrying buckets for him on Saturdays. And, oh, cool. and then I went on to, with my uncles when I was a teenager and, then eventually leaving school, working with them, and you know, st- sticking with it for over twenty years, moving to moving from Northern Ireland to Nantucket and plastering houses in Nantucket. And, wow! And, uh, two Nantucket. years into my stay in Nantucket, I, I started community theatre, and that kind of changed everything. That brought really? me on the this path. Then, yeah, in my mid thirties. Huh. But I'm glad I did it, man. Plastering is a it's, a it's a noble it's a noble trade. People need houses to live in. So agreed, agreed. They're yeah. there. What what is the process of plastering? Because I know the word and I've seen it, but I don't know exactly how it works. Oh yeah, I, I can tell you. Well, what, when a when a house is built, typically the the old like sort of fashioned way with with, with blocks uh-huh. and, and bricks instead of this uh, like wooden drywall you you see you see now like that's a lot of timber framed uh, uh-huh. 
like prefab stuff. Um, sure. When it was built, built the old way, the plaster would be the material that was then applied over the over the the bricks and the, the blocks. Oh, it would be cool. it would be a mortar like a mortar based. So you would mix you would mix like four parts sand with one part cement in a in a mixer, and you would oh. keep adding that in, into a into a cement mixer until you maybe had maybe 40, 40 sand one uh, tan cement and you would you know with water you would obviously water it down mm -hmm. then you would apply that to with a, a a trowel you would physically trowel it off a like a board a hawk they have uh -huh. in your hand and you would you would apply that to the walls and then and that would set and then you would apply what they call finished plaster coats Oh. Uh, to to that, which you would mix in a bucket, and would be like a like a plaster Paris effect, almost like a like a powder that you would uh. mix with water, and you would then would apply that to that, and you would have to rub it several thousand times before <laughs> it would dry. And <laughs> your arms would be hanging off, and and then the sure. paint would would come after that, and that would be someone else's job, obviously. But and it was the same on ceilings, although obviously that would be done with plasterboard, which was a a predecessor of blueboard or sheetrock. Gotcha. And okay. And the 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 plaster mixed in the bucket, the the uh, what do they call it? Skim coat. I guess they call it skim coat here. Uh -huh. Would would then be applied to the ceilings and stuff. And so it was a it was a lot of that. You'd be on stilts and all kinds of crazy fun stuff. That's cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for asking. That. Nobody asks me about that anymore. I'm this, happy to talk about it. <laughs> this is my whole thing. Is I I like to learn, and I have people on from a, a wide range of of everything and if i don't know about something i'm very interested in it and i'm like oh, okay plastering i'm equally interested in that as everything else you've ever done that's what you did it for 20 plus years so then what made you jump across the yeah bar? yeah brought me a lot of friends brought me a lot of good brought me a lot of good things um I bet. jump across the pond i um well i i sort of always wanted to to go to to america and i kept the plan for the green card and i kept getting turned down to, sure. with the the usual reason like you've got no special skill yeah uh, that that kind of, i'm too old because i was like 30 then and um i had actually seen a, a, a there was a, a a friend of mine a friend of my mother's had moved to nantucket with nice. uh with her husband from the town in which we we grew up uh with who we all became uh friends with they were lovely and uh, and i had seen a movie um recently around that time too called to Jillian on her 37th birthday with Michelle Pfeiffer and Peter Gallagher and that was Great. set on Nantucket so the fact that the two of these things <laughs> had sort of happened I can't rightly remember which came first but they they seem to have happened simultaneously mm -hmm. and that was my stimulus uh for going or impetus for going to to Nantucket and and I fell in love with it uh, yeah. immediately and Thankfully, our friends gave me a place to stay for a couple of weeks, and and uh, got the feet in the ground there, and and you know eventually went to lumber yards every day looking for. I I missed, I left this part out. I, I was gonna go anyway, so I went as a not an illegal alien. I went in yeah. legally, <laughs> sure, but I just never left. Sure. So I was I was Good invited man. by the U.S. government for ninety days, and I stayed for six years. So, <laughs> so, so there you go. The term for that is a, is an overstay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a resilience. So, I, re I respect it. <laughs> I'm 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 known for overstaying my welcome in many many areas <laughs> of my life, but I, I'm glad I overstayed that one because I met a, a lovely woman that that uh, that 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 um, kindly kindly took me in and gave me babies and yeah. my, a future. And <laughs> she's still with me today. My my gorgeous Beautiful. wife. And so I'm I'm glad I overstayed and didn't listen to the American government. <laughs> of course, of course. And now I'm a citizen. All is legal, and there I have you my are. Congratulations, President Obama, welcoming me. So I'm I'm thankful. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I'm seeing there's kind of a climate similarity between Nantucket Island and Ireland. So you're not totally. like. It's a little bit of a, a, a physical familiarity. Totally. One, like one island to another, honestly. It's mm -hmm. uh, yeah, really, really beautiful place. And the, I, I just got, I get, I feel like I got very lucky in my life. I, I'm three, three island homes. My girls like to say Ireland, Nantucket and Manhattan. Sure. And the, everyone in my life in Ireland held me up to a, a certain degree and, and and carried me along and 
and propelled me forward and to Nantucket and the people in Nantucket did that as well. And now the people in Manhattan are doing it too. And I just, I, I'm not really sure how I got this lucky, but I'm very <laughs> grateful to, for the three islands and, and everyone in it who has, who has helped me stay alive <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> to this very moment today, Brian. Bell. That's so, right. Still yeah, kicking. Man. That's all that matters. You woke yeah. up. Very fortunate, man. That's so cool though. What had you been before or was this your first time? To Nantucket? To Nantucket and America. Yeah, I'd actually been to, to Pittsburgh in, in 1995. Oh. My, my great friend, actually my oldest friend in the world, a, a gentleman called Brian Larkin. We've been friends since we were four. I'm 440. He's a great name. He's a, he's a, he's a great guy. He, he def, you, he's, he's exactly what you would expect when you, when yeah. you hear that name. It's like <laughs> Brian, is, Brian is the best. And uh, so we've been friends since we were four. So that's, I mean, I'm 49 now. That's 45 years Uh so uh, he he won this scholarship. There was a Duquesne scholarship for people from our town in cool. Uri in Northern Ireland at the time. And I think it was Dan Rooney, the Pittsburgh Steelers mm -hmm. uh, head guy, started it because his family were initially from there. And my friend Brian was the second Duquesne fellow. So he came over from Uri and the thing was he was to be in Pittsburgh for a year or two years studying at Duquesne University. So my first time in America was visiting Brian Larkin to Duquesne University and and it was terrific. And it just like that really cemented my my love for the country and I want to come here then. It was amazing. And it was a great time too in America. I was only there for two weeks, but so many things were happening at that time. There was, I believe, um, in Pittsburgh, Bruce Willis and Sarah Jessica Parker were making a movie in the river called Striking Distance. Uh, and that was that perfect. was happening like all around us. Um, I think... Mario Lemieux, the, the, mm -hmm. the great um, hockey player, had just come back from, from having a, an illness. And he, th there was like a mem memorable event when he had played his first game that, that night for the Pittsburgh Penguins. The, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers had just turned around. They were playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars and they had lost like six games in a row or something. Mm -hmm. And they needed to win this game that I was at, that Brian brought me to, to have a chance at the Super Bowl. And they won it and they went all the way. So there was what? a lot of memorable events. Hootie and the Blowfish had just oh, like what? blown up. Like literally, I only want to be with you. It was in the radio everywhere. It was just, it, it just seemed like a magical place, man. Like this yeah. little, like concrete city, this little steel town with people like me, yeah. all working class people with no frills. And they're just sitting talking like this. And like, wow, this is you know, I then found out that not all of America was like that, like everywhere yeah. else. People <laughs> sure. in many, many different ways. And, right. and um, but it's all, all, all great. But yeah, that was 1990, 1995. Wow. That was, yeah. So I went on a, I was on a B lane for the next seven years to get to the US after that. Sure. And I, then I visited Kansas a few times. I cool. met a friend there in Duquesne University, a uh, wonderful, wonderful friend, Karen French. Now Karen Colano living in Pittsburgh with her husband, Tom, and kids. And her and I became fast friends. And I went and visited her family in Fort Leavenworth one year and Lansing another year. And, you know, so it's, Get yeah, it. the love affair with the U.S. has been going on a long time, man. I love that. I also love the listening to people's lives and, like, connecting dots. The fact that you went to a place that was a steel town of working class people and a movie was being filmed there, not knowing what was coming down the pike. Pretty cool. Oh, wow. Nice connection, Brian. Ballard, Pretty man. Cool. Yeah, thanks. And in actual fact, it, it's so funny with the Pittsburgh thing, because in 2014, I, I got a regional theater gig in uh, at Pittsburgh Irish and Classical Theater, picked Classic Theater. And uh, it was called Observe the Sons of Ulster marching towards the Somme uh, by the Brigade of Ulster soldiers in, in World War One that were kind of sent out as cannon fodder, mm -hmm. basically. To um, And a lovely woman put me up there. Her name is Mona Rush, um, uh, a doctor, and, uh, and she's amazing. And uh, we've been best friends ever since. So I've been to Pittsburgh several times since. And but now I have like a larger family in Pittsburgh as well. And so, yeah, uh, she might be a bit, I'm not sure how she'd take me mentioning. Nah, she loved me mentioning her name. I was going to say maybe I should. But yeah, Mona Royce, I love you if you're listening to this. <laughs> That's great. So when you finally yeah. did it, you make your way to Nantucket. You said you're going to Lumberyards doing whatever jobs that you can. When did, yeah. when did acting pop up? Because it's so different from like a 
tactile construction mindset? Yeah, well, there was in, in 2004, I had, I had actually seen a, uh, um, some posters around around town on Nantucket and in the in the newspaper in the local newspaper the national uh, the the Nantucket and is it the Enquirer I was going to say the National Enquirer the, the, <laughs> the Nantucket Enquirer and Maryland perfect and there, was, um, and there was some advertisements for a theatre workshop doing some classes and I, I sort of looked at it briefly and and then when I thought about it I rethought about it I went back to to visit that again and it had ended so so I, I had missed the boat on that and that went away for sort of thought even went away for a year but then the following year around the same time around fall or, or winter it was 2000 and I think it was 2004 going into 2005 mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine who was, was working with at the time had mentioned to me that he saw those um, advertisements again on the on the the posters up up again and I went and, and investigated and f found the posters and the advertisements and to be sure I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very thankful to him for you know for bringing it up to me because I did go on and find them and I uh, and it but the, the 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 sticker was that it was for the local troupe of actors who were already veteran actors with experience to sort of sharpen oh. up their um, their skills for uh -huh. the uh, for the upcoming season and it wasn't open to non-actors oh but thankfully i got the phone number and called the lady up and I, she teases me to this to this day you know i she says that i, I told her i was uh, I, I had no experience and, <laughs> but i i love the movies and i'm very enthusiastic and no one will work harder and stuff like this and get it so so she she took me in and we were doing the I loved it so much, man. We were I found home right away, but we we uh do, she did the Uta Hagen exercises. There was like uh -huh. 10 exercises. So she would do that and uh you would do one exercise a week. But I loved it so much I would come in with maybe episodes three, four, five, six, and seven all tied into one thing. She, <laughs> she's like, this is taking enthusiasm to a whole nother level. You might be doing five exercises, but you're not doing any of them right. Sure. So <laughs> but full marks for enthusiasm. Let's do one at a time. And, you did warn her, um, to be yeah, fair. Yeah. And her yeah, that was that was Meredith Martin. And um mm -hmm. and she's a she's a dear, a dear, dear friend of mine. Great actor, great teacher. Um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be acting. And I'm thankful she gave me what they, what they would call at home the fool's pardon, and sure. and, um, and brought me on board. So I think that was January 2005. Wow, that's so cool, though. And the idea, like, what's in your head to where it's a class, and they tell you it's a class for people who've been doing it for a long time, and you still want to do it. Like, had you thought about acting before this point, or something about it just caught your curiosity? I think it was just one of those things besides the year before kind of paying it a minimal little bit of attention in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what was at play there. It didn't really feel like, I mean, I don't want to get all ethereal or anything, but I, 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 I don't know what was going on there. I, I don't know that that was all me or what, what that sure. was, or I don't know what was behind it or um, it's looking back on it now. Maybe I, I don't even know it, but it felt sure. that I was being sort of steered in that, in that direction for yeah and i'm whatever, whatever it was i'm 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 sure glad of whether it was to just keep me out of harm's way or whether it was to you know um start me off in the next the next path next sure. part of my life yeah i don't know but I'm, I'm glad i'm glad it happened i love it i i i realized that trusting your gut you can never go wrong and we're like kind of conditioned to not trust our gut because our brain is yeah. like Let's do the safe thing instead. It's like, no, no, no. There's like a, a, a connection to something else that just knows if you follow it, you just never know. And yeah. That's pretty cool. I'd agree with that. that yeah, Brian, it is, it is really cool. You, you, you can't really go wrong with your, mm -hmm. with, your, uh, with, your, with your gut. Sometimes it gets you in a little bit of trouble, but... Uh, yeah, but, yeah, of but course. The, for the most spice, part... Little spice. Little spice. <laughs> little spice gets in there and you got you to gotta sort of separate you know, from uh, what's the difference between your gut and what's emotion, you yeah. know, and then that's like, <laughs> but uh, True. Uh, yeah, the gut's been a good, been a good guide. Yeah. So what happened after that? You take these classes, you, you fall in love with it. Where do you go from there? Cause you're, I don't know if there's a massive theater scene on Nantucket, 
or if there's a lot of acting going on there. Yeah, there there actually is, but back then right. it was it it had stalled a little bit. And thankfully, for the three years that I was involved in the acting there, I was I was part of a of a resurgence of it. So oh, that cool. not not myself single handedly, but sure. uh, the, the, the the with with that group there was a there was a, a significant resurgence in theatre at that time that people mm-hmm. started to get, get excited about theatre and and it's been building ever since. And and there's a terrific guy there, it's a, um, artistic director uh, Justin Cherney, tri- the, the artistic director of Theatre Workshop in Nantucket. John Shea, the great actor, John Shea, great pal of mine's artistic director Emeritus. Um, there's a terrific theatre on the island there. Uh, two called White Heron with Michael Kopko and, and Lynn Bolton. They're awesome. The Dreamland Theater is on Nant- Nantucket and um, Laura Gallagher Burn. They're like there's just like there's three massive theater organizations there at the minute, uh, theatrical organizations, and there's there's one in Sconset that comes every year. But I the truth is, I don't know if I did fall in love with it right away. I loved all the exercises and like the everything like that brought brought to me, you know, and but there was a lot of I got cast in a in, in a Christmas Carol at the end of two thousand and five. Scrooge Great. Marley, that uh, and I was Bob Bob uh, Cratchit. Fantastic. And the uh, there was a lot of there was a lot of drama, man. Yeah, there was a lot of I I'd not been look. I'm an Irish builder, and I'd not be I'd not been exposed to sure. to such such <laughs> openness and and feelings. Sure. And I and I love you, you know. Like outside of my my own mom, I don't think I'd heard anybody say I love you. Maybe my dad said it once or twice back then. He says sure. it a lot more now, you know. We what we all grow and evolve uh-huh. into it, but uh-huh. uh, suddenly everybody loves everybody, and the like. It was just a for for a you know a sort of a reserve to a degree. Irish builder and suddenly you're there with 35 or 40 people sharing their feelings and right. <laughs> I'm like whoa I don't know if this is the right thing for me at all so and interestingly enough I actually went to to New York City to stay with a friend of mine for oh, cool. for a couple of days over Christmas at the at the end of that over the holiday season at the end of the production mm-hmm. and um and she had encouraged me to she was like so what do you think do you think this is for you and I said ah I don't know. I think the the love the love alone might kill me. Sure. So uh, you know, I, I mean, oh, how things have changed. Right? Right. But, I mean, there has to be restraining orders, no touch orders put out against yeah. me now because I, I hug on sight. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like same, so it's, same, same. Uh, oh man, oh, it's good, it's good. So, so I, she said. She gave me a dollar ticket, I think it was. She said, I want you to go down to the Manhattan Theater Club and see this play. It was December 23rd, 2005, Wednesday matinee. And you could probably make your mind up after that if this is something you want to do or not. So I went to see it. And at the end of it, I remember the the whole audience being gone and me just sitting in the in the chair, still floored, tears, Ooh. just by myself. And guys coming over to me saying, you have to leave now, sir. Um, da, da, da. Anyway, this was, uh, it was, it was doubt. With Ooh, um, yes, and I think it was um, Heather and Ch- uh, 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 Breen, uh, Breen O'Byrne. It was Breen O'Byrne's performance in particular that Amazing. that made me know realize that I want to do that. I want to be as good as that. If yeah. I can't be as good as that, I don't want to do this. Hell so I'm yeah. going to do whatever it takes to be as good as that and make this the rest of my life. And for the next two years on Nantucket. I uh, went after doing Doubt on Nantucket and Theatre Workshop um, got behind me. We did it in 2008. What? I was, and but then I realized I'm in here. Oh, I don't know if I can actually pull this off by myself or not. I'm like, sure, <laughs> not, I don't have any technique. I've got a lot of guts, but I got right. no technique. <laughs> sure. So I, so every, every other weekend on Nantucket, I would get the boat from Nantucket to Hyannis. And then I would get the eight hour bus from, from Hyannis Ooh. to New York and take weekend classes at HB studios. My friend, Sarah Fromfelder, great Nantucket actor, great actor period, just happens to live on Nantucket. She would let, let me stay with her. And uh, my friend Aaron Raftery, another great actor, stayed with her. Sometimes she's in LA now, killing it as well. And um, so we do the classes. And one week I was in the in a video shop, and the video shop was called the Camera Shop in Nantucket. And the lady that runs it came out and said, "Oh, I, I was going in, you know, getting little, like the New York videos, like for dialect sure. stuff to to try to do that that uh, Father Flynn dialect, right?" And um, 
the lady said, I, I, you're playing father. There's much more to this story that, that kind of expands out beyond <laughs> what we're, so I'm going to keep it to the, to the father Flynn thing. But she sure. said, yeah, I know you, you're, you're Kieran, you're playing father Flynn. And, and, and I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, uh, well, my sister happened to coach the, my sister's a dialect coach and she happened oh. to coach the, uh, the, one of the, one of the Broadway casts in, with with doubt and maybe she'll help you and i say oh yeah great great i, I didn't know what to uh what to expect or anything but anyway the next day i get a phone call and um lo and behold it is my wife to be on the oh. on the on the phone <laughs> calling me to, to help me and the lady in the video store was my my sister-in-law wendy and um and i i'm very grateful to wendy because she she said my wife was actually asking about it at the time because she was uh she was like a sort of on the other end of the uh um the dissolution of her first marriage sure and um so it was a it, like it was a sensitive time and stuff but but she had asked uh, my sister-in-law what 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 i was like and stuff and uh and and i this is embarrassing it makes me proud too my sister-in-law <laughs> said if I, if I was single i would marry him myself and it made, <laughs> made, it made me feel I don't know why she would ever say a thing like that. <laughs> if I was single, I wouldn't marry me. So, but, but I'm grateful that she did. And long story short, uh, Kate, my dialect coach, who couldn't, who was the greatest dialect coach on the planet, bar none. She is the, yeah. the coach to the stars. Amazing. Couldn't uh, manage. I became her first um, unsuccessful American <laughs> dialect person. <laughs> But I, I've succeeded somewhat as her husband. So. You know, you know, you can't win them all, Kieran. All right? You got to pick. You got to pick. And that's, we, you know, we, we ended up, we ended up here. I knew the second I, I laid eyes on her, there was like, there was no romantic notions in my head, but I, I knew the second I clapped eyes on her, I, uh, I wanted to marry her and, and be with her. And, and that's what has happened. And we're here amazing. in New York. Oh, I, again, follow that gut. It knows. It knows. Look at, look what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It's, <laughs> it knows brother. I <laughs> love that. Um, I love it even yeah. more that it was doubt that was like, Oh, this is what I want to do. And following that specific thing led to the love led of your to, life. Yeah. How yeah. cool. Yep. Yeah. I had no idea. That's what, that's what I was, uh, that's what I was on my, my way to. I was on, onto a, you know, it wasn't not only the role of father Flynn, but it was the role of father with, without ah, the Flynn. You know, I and, like it. There's a book title yeah. in here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're we're here. You know that, that that's wow. Came, yeah, came to New York. Did it was the recession. It was two thousand and eight. So sure, I remember going up and down the West Side Highway, looking at closed construction sites like nothing was happening. I mean, the best I could do was guys would offer me offer me jobs for eleven bucks an hour if I could do if I could do carpentry, plumbing, electrical. Mm -hmm. tiling all kind of like jeez, everything guys, but plastering <laughs> i can do i can do one thing decently yeah. <laughs> like and now suddenly you're you know you're down to this but thankfully i, I did get a, a job that paid me 25 bucks an hour with the guy for a little while and get it. that yeah that folded and you know i i came out of that a little short with the guy didn't sure. didn't pay everything but it, it was tough times and and you know good luck to him he tried his best and held out as long as he could and did as much as he could so it was grand and then uh for started bartending in a in an irish bar, or in a greek bar called kefi the upper west side in 2010 <laughs> um right a passage 2000, 2010 they trained me up as a as a bartender that was awesome for three years uh great pal of mine scotty brooks great writer uh and um he got me a job in there for three years the kefi i'll always be thankful to to Kefi and while I was working in Kefi, an open call for um for the 25th anniversary production of the Freedom of the City at the Irish Rep, and where I'm actually performing today, yeah, um, then made by God. Uh, Ten years later, there was an open call for that, and I went to the open call for that for the Freedom of the City, Brian Fields, the Freedom of the City, and 
that that was it, man. That was the professional equity card, the the whole thing, and and things just kind of took off from there. I realize you just wow. haven't asked me a question in like a half an hour. I've just kept talking. So this is what I'm, I'm here like, for. <laughs> I'm so enraptured in everything, and I'm like putting. Yeah. Like, this is what I haven't. I haven't <laughs> let you get back in there, but so that's the the trajectory to to. Today. I, hey, listen, I'm here for you. I am amazed right now. <laughs> I'm, I want to know. So if you have so father father Flynn is this role that really resonated with you. This is what I want to do. And then uh, time passes and you're playing that role. What is that like? Because you're in the shoes that inspired you to do this whole thing. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. It, was, it felt so great. Yeah, had to. Have. It was so great. To be honest, I, at the time, I, well, no, that, that's not really, that's not really true. I don't, I don't think I've ever had imposter syndrome. I'm not going to fake humility like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, that, that's, that, that, yeah, that wouldn't Teach be, me that your ways here. Gauche. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Uh, no, I, I don't think I. Yeah, I, I don't suffer from imposter syndrome. I go where I go, and that's it. Maybe. <laughs> um, it's that but, construction but it, but upbringing, it, you know. It, it did feel <laughs> somewhat, somewhat surreal if sometimes if it was really happening, or as yeah. opposed to, am I supposed to be here? Because yes, I am. Sure. I am. I'm not going to apologize for that. Uh, but at some point there, and even since there are situations in, in my life that I find myself in, it, it seems, it seems a little surreal. And at the very least, I, I do sort of pinch myself and just to yeah. make sure that I am here. Sure. And sometimes <laughs> I wonder how I got here. Right. <laughs> That's so cool. That how long did how long did that run for? That ran for it ran for I think around a month, like three or four weekends, and then they extended Ooh. it. It was oh, what? Like, it was crazy, and people were laying around the block. It was nuts. It was it was like it was that wasn't really that was unusual for yeah for theater workshop of Nantucket at that particular time. Sure, because but it's not unusual now because they're they're right. soaring as is White Heron Dreamland Theater is like a massive thing now, and that's great. But at that time, as I say, it was I was excuse me lucky enough to be to be around it and be a part of that sort of. Th theater resurgence it was really thrilling to to be a yeah. part of it and yeah and uh yeah and john shea uh was the artistic director you know you, you gotta know john shea he he's a, a great pal of mine uh wrote um the great movie southie with donnie yeah, Wahlberg yeah. And, and amanda pete a uh -huh. uh, great movie out a couple of years ago gray lady with uh, uh -huh. eric eric dane rebecca gayhart uh, uh i mean just the guy's a, a a rock star and he's like a work similar to myself in ways where he started his career on Nantucket. He was a painter and oh, just wow. got sort of spotted and went into got theater, started with theater workshop in Nantucket there. And and so that was all to you know to be around um John and 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 people at the time that were really passionate about getting theater back up and to see it now in Nantucket with you, you are really fabulous regional theater white hair in there now people come from all over the country to work in it and it's just uh I'm proud of that like I'm proud you to be associated be. with Nantucket theater you know you should be and I, I love Thanks, just Brian. seeing passion it ripples you know it's very infectious if someone actually cares about something it I don't even need to know what the thing is you're talking about but if you <laughs> love grass I will listen to you talk about it for an hour just there's something about <laughs> that you know <laughs> I just love it. And I think you're an great. amazing listener and you ask terrific questions and you're just a lovely man. I'm really happy to Stop be here. It. Thanks for having me, brother. Of course. But listen, you're also we're not getting away from your wife yet because I need <laughs> to know, is it true that Catherine Zeta Jones helped you propose? <laughs> I need to know this story, Kieran. <laughs> I see you try to fly over. I don't think so. <laughs> All right. I, I don't think Catherine would mind me telling you this, but yes, I. I, I feel like if maybe if Catherine, if it hadn't have been for Catherine's involvement, I don't know if my wife would have said yes. But, Whatever works. <laughs> but uh, but my, my wife and I had actually, yeah, because things were moving very fast. Sure. Things were moving very fast. Like I saw a woman I loved, I wonder, that was it. And she's a very passionate person herself. And she was like, sure. yeah, yeah, I love you too. Yeah. And and then and then one morning, I'm not, I, I kind of forget the, the details of this part, but I remember her breaking up with me and uh, and sending me packing. And <laughs> she might kill me for saying this, but she's like, this is too fast. Rah, rah. Sure. So she thought I was on my way back to Nantucket. But what she didn't know was I had planned to ask her to marry me that same day of the breakup. So Perfect I timing. went, I forget the name. I know I forget the name <laughs> of the florist. 
But, you know, this was back when there was no no internet. You had to call. You had to, like, well, there was internet, but I just didn't know about it. And, you you, you know, so yeah. I went over to this, like, I think it was over in the east side and, and got in a, a truck, like a van, a flower van with these people. And they they brought 50 sunflowers. And um, we went out to Silver Cup Studios. My wife was making a movie at Silver Cup Studios. And I'm there basically in my, like, work gear. And, <laughs> and I show up at the gate and announced myself to a productionist. I'd never been on a movie set. I didn't know anything about this. I'm still <laughs> a community theater part-time actor and a full-time plasterer. So I didn't realize the ridiculousness of myself and what I was asking sure. people to do. <laughs> and thankfully, the whoever the production assistant was at the time, I'm, I'm sad to, to say I, I don't remember. It was a, it was a blur. Um, called, made the calls that needed to be called. And, and, and Catherine and put me in her dressing room told him to put me in her dressing room short time after Catherine comes just just like what's the word like I don't know how, how you say someone so eloquent and gorgeous and, and just wonderful comes into a room but she almost like soars yeah like, oh yeah glides. she's she just, just amazing she just floats yeah and she just came in and she, I remember saying okay Irish Let's do this. <laughs> so she put all the pieces in place, got everything set up. We have the photos. We have we have the video. They videotaped everything. Amazing. And she called Kate in to early um, to she said she needed help. Like when Kate was like, you don't need help with this. Da, da, da. And Catherine was like, because she was Catherine's dialect coach. And right. Kate called her into work and the whole thing was set up on on set and and uh and the whole set was around us and and uh, I proposed and and my wife's after a significant delay, my wife's uh, uh, there was a I, I, I forget, but the turn the turn <laughs> it was yes. It worked. The, 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 it, it was a yes and and uh, thank goodness. And, uh, I mean, because that would have been an epic fail. Can you imagine? Time. <laughs> you would have I had to can. change your name. I can imagine it, man. I, but I, I, it wasn't a good imagine. But I would have to change my name. But so that's how it went down in Silver Cup Studios. Uh, thankfully, the director of the movie at the time, the movie was called The Rebound. Thankfully, Bart Friend looked at the director, allowed it to happen, and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Catherine. Um, I have a very special place in my heart for for Catherine until the end of time for that. And. Um, for that, I'm grateful to her. Yes, so that is that is what happened. That's amazing. So it might surprise you or not. I have seen your work in Public Morals. I have seen Diary. I have seen ah. Second Son. I've seen all of it. And you're oh, killing Brian. it. I'm killing it. <laughs> you're killing it all over the place. Did you? Oh, Brian, thank you. <laughs> How much of your real-life bartending experience informed Joe in Second Son? You're like, I could play a bartender. I've been playing one for a while. <laughs> Everything about it informed yeah. Joe. <laughs> Everything. I remember people coming in the coming in the cafe. It was like my first couple of weeks, and I didn't know how to make any of the drinks. And oh. I had my little my little book with all the recipes written in them because when sure. the when the managers I would write it down, and all the you know the posh fancy Upper West Siders would be coming in asking for twist to this and twist to that and upside down the others and i'm like my god can somebody just ask for a beer yeah <laughs> so thankfully in joe's bar in the second sun the um thankfully uh my, my great pal uh john buffalo mailer uh just uh just wanted a beer yeah <laughs> so was, my kind of guy uh, my kind of guy and, and the, the director J jennifer gelfer great friend of mine too thankfully she uh didn't insist that manhattan's are our apple sure. teenies were, were made part of the right. Part of the <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was epic. <laughs> That's amazing. Was it your idea or production's idea to make Angus with a shaved head? That was my, uh, I, I, you know, I'd have to ask John Buffalo Mailer and, and Jennifer Gelfer, but I, I believe, I believe that was my idea. Cause wow. I, I, my, what my memory serves is, um, I, I, I don't think they'd mind me saying this, and it, it was, it, I think it was a bit of a hard sell to begin with, myself playing Angus, because oh. I've kind of made a career out of, out of like nice guys and sure, funny guys, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I hope I'm remembering this correctly, but I, I believe I, I believe I shaved my head. Just cause and and did the and did the goatee, and I had like a black tank top up on in the bathroom. And and sent the and sent the picture to to Jennifer. I, like I texted a picture to Jennifer and I said, "How's this for Angus McLaughlin?" And Jennifer was like, <laughs> "The director, yes, done." 
She Ooh. said that the buffalo, yes, done. So uh, when I shaved my head, that's when Angus appeared. Yes, so that that did it did come from the shaved head and the and the goatee. And I, I think I might have got that inspiration from. I've no I've no need to ever watch Breaking Bad because accidentally. <laughs> Accidentally, I stumbled upon the very final scene of the very final episode late one night on Ooh, TNT or something. Oh, no. And there was this bald guy with the goatee. And uh-huh. I think it was that, that 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 made me go, oh, I could let's see how this how this looks. And then that's that's when everything about Angus then started to started to take shape gotcha. and appear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not sure if that was a question, but that's it is that because I, I wonder because yeah. it, it's such a bold choice and one that you just made. And you're like, does this work? You can't go back from that. <laughs> yeah, you can't go back from that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny. It's funny. I actually didn't shave him all the way bald. I shaved him to like a number one because because I, sure. I didn't have the I couldn't do the big thing on, oh, on my sure. head, you know, and then I sent it to that. And then um, it was actually Jennifer who insisted our, our director insisted on me going to the skin. There She's like, go. yeah, I love it, but go further, baby. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, are you sure? Because right. suddenly I'm becoming vain about my lack of hair <laughs> sure. on a number one. And so it's like, do it. <laughs> you know? what, did you learn something about yourself being shaving your head? Was that the first time you ever shaved your head? As short as that, yes. That was the first okay. time I'd ever had that done in my life. How did yeah. it feel? Was it weird? It was really weird. It has to be, right? It was really weird because you're you're kind of naked then to a degree. I bet. Yeah, I, I felt quite exposed and, and vulnerable for for quite some time, and then I kind of started to that kind of somewhere along the line morphed into a little bit of a swagger, and there I you know, know. <laughs> so you have you to. became like daredevil, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Either way, it looked like you had fun. It was great fun. It was I, I, I made a movie with all my best pals. No, yeah, it, it, it was great fun. Uh, John Buffalo Miller wrote a great script. Jennifer, I mean, she's my hero, was directing me. And, 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 like basically, pretty much everything I have in my career today is is to a large degree, um, thanks to that to that team. Sure. And uh, Miller Tuckman Media, and um, I'm thankful for them. And it's just anytime you get to make art with your friends, is oh it? yeah. If you're not enjoying it. Uh, uh, and something's wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's like it was it was great fun. I agree. There's nothing like it. And getting yeah, into was... like how is it working being from Newry and now you're at an Irish rep theater, that sort of synergy is that that's gotta be pretty cool. Yeah, it's really cool. It's the coolest. Um you know, my my, my you know, my, my daughters are always like, you know, well, uh they're so proud because often I'm the only like real Irish one in the oh, place sure. <laughs> there, you know, because 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 a lot of Americans and and you know, that's a great thing about the Irish rep. They they hire so many, Karen and Charlotte. Uh, they hire so uh, you know um, so many nationalities and stuff, and, sure. and it's just uh, it's it's amazing. For, but I always have that little bit of extra pride being the being sure. the Irish <laughs> Irish one there. You know? Sure, but yeah, they're. <laughs> They're terrific and amazing. And they're Kieran O'Reilly and Charlotte Moore are our family. You know, they're yeah. they're their mama and papa to to hundreds and hundreds of 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 working job and actors here in the city. And they give us all a home. Yeah. Somewhere to somewhere to take our wet coat off and, and sit down and you know, be warm in and, and have a have a my place of like minds to go. So yeah, again, man, the the luck I, I don't know how I got so lucky. Heart. You're leading with heart and you give what you get. That's how it works. You know, Thanks, Brian. I'm, I'm not I, surprised. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Whatever it is, I'm grateful for them all. Man. So it's, <laughs> I, I, I think I might be a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for all of them. Man. Yeah. I love it. I love when good things happen to good people. Has now you've had some time and you've had a, a, a I'm going to call it the beginning of a career because you're just getting started. Has Thanks. Me too. Your, <laughs> Has your love of the craft evolved at all now that you've been doing it for a while? Was it different than you expected when you first got into it? I've loved it from the second from the second I started it. I, I don't. I, I think it would nearly be impossible for me to love it any more than sure. than what I the, what I always have done. The thing that has changed, uh, the thing that has has grown is um, I'm better. Yeah, Experience. I know more. Yeah, uh, um, and and that adds a whole nother level of 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 enjoyment. And, yeah. and stuff too. I know that d- doesn't sound that sounds a little bit braggy, uh, but with time into something, the, it's like the idea. 
it's like the Beatles and the 20,000 hours or whatever, you know, the, right. the more time you put in, you're just naturally going to get better at it. And it totally. It just if, Yeah. It feels good to be in the position where I'm at today. And I appreciate you saying that at the beginning of your career, because I mean, I, I started community theater in Nantucket in 2005 and, and toiled away until I got my professional card here in 2012. So 10 years, but I very much, and particularly actually at this specific moment in time, yeah. have said to all of my peers that, Whatever it is right now, I feel like I'm at the beginning of the, the like the, the beginning of my career right now. Yeah, that's yeah. In, in the best possible, the best possible sense. I love that. And as you get older, your roles change and it gets better and you can develop as an artist. And it just uh, there's so many layers yeah. to the craft. And I love it. It's it yeah, it, it's do you act yourself? I do. Yeah. I do. I'll, well, I'll send you a little something. Don't worry. <laughs> Please send me a little something because I'm I'm so sorry I, I don't don't know more I should have I should have known that. This that's is about awesome. you, Kieran. Don't no, try to turn this on me. <laughs> no, but that's all. That's awesome, man. Can you can you can you please Absolutely. send me stuff? Because because I would love because. You can't be this awesome and not be a great actor too. So stop it. I'm cutting so, this out. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You better not cut it out. I, I, I like. I'll go on the show and, and like right. say this is not real. This is fake news. That's right, fake news, baby. I have the so, truth. Yeah, let's. I will, no, I, I. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Because I, I want to ask you all about you, but I know that's not we'll, what this is about. We'll but I there. do want to. Do you, we'll, we'll get okay. there. I'll I'll ask you then. Is is there advice that you have that you've learned along the way in the craft? Because you started and you didn't know anything, and now that you've gotten better. Were there things and pitfalls and hurdles you had to like overcome? Like, I wish I knew this beforehand, or here's a pitfall to avoid to anyone else on the journey. Yes, I actually do. And it's a, uh, it, it's, it's not necessarily an acting technique sure. thing or, or anything, any nuggets got to do with that. Cause I think I'd be wildly ill-equipped for that. <laughs> but what I have learned is, and this might I'm not sure how this will sound, I don't care. I'm just going to say it anyway. Do it. What, what, I, what I have learned is that there are enough people out there that, that, will put, that will put us down for put people down on a daily basis that will expect less from you. So, and there'll be enough problems pop up and, and situations and hurdles and obstacles that are not of our own making. So the, the one thing that I, that, I, that I say to myself all the time is be kind to yourself. Ooh, be gentle on yourself. Know that you're doing the best that you can do on that particular day at that particular moment and let it go. I love that. That's Look that, in the that's mirror and say, truth. I love you. I'm proud of you. You're doing your best. You're, you're good enough. You know, and none of this negative negative uh self back actor talk it's no good it gets in our way and it creates nothing and say yes as as much as possible not yes to bad situations but to yes i can to me to us because yeah. no shuts doors right in your face and yes opens up windows to possibilities and not to be confused with say yes to everything that comes your way no there's a great strength in saying no to things that aren't right for you sure but just just be just to be kind to ourselves, man. Treat our, treat ourselves right. Take a bath. Yeah. Have a <laughs> have 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 a have a cupcake. You know, be okay about not getting the job. It's it's all right. Sure. You know, just I have fun because yeah. we're going to be a lot longer under the ground than we are over it. So. True. Like, true right? <laughs> not, not to bring it down to more you're right though or anything but so you're it's, right it's like we're it's not the, here for a long time we're here for a good time yeah it's the greatest job in the world and, and to a degree now we, we're we're the we're we're amongst the 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 groups of essential workers out there now we're, we're we have to get out there and count ourselves lucky to be in a position to help heal people's help soothe their hearts and souls and and, and the, the, give them some nice thoughts to go into their head that's you know filled with what's been happening the last two or three years and so to a large degree we're i think we're essential now and just be be happy and proud to be an artist and, and get out there now and do our job and help heal our, our our fellow our fellow people i agree and i couldn't love that more if i tried oh 
Kieran, you're even better than I imagined. And I built you uh, up pretty high in my head. I'm just oh, going to tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, Brian. Oh, you're a terrible man. Stop I, saying all these nice I things. I knew before me, we started. I even told my wife, I was like, I'm about to have a really good time. She's like, yeah, I go. I can feel it. You're a joy to hang out with, dude. Thank you, Brian. What's your wife's name? Monique. Monique, will you give Monique a big hug for me and tell her thank you for, for letting me have you for of the last course. hour? And Only if you do the same for Kate. I will. And for contributing to your awesomeness, because yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a partnership, man. And one makes the other better. So that's true. I totally agree. And dude, we've been talking for an hour already. You survived. Brother, I could talk to you all day long. You're good people, man. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really I'm really appreciative and grateful that I'm honored and, and honestly humbled that, that you would find me of interest to, to do this. I'm, I'm really grateful, man. Thank you, Brian. Of course. Now, before I release you into the wild. Where can people find you online? Where can they see you places? Talk to me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. If, if, if anyone's in New York, we got one week left through March 20th at the Ayers Repertory Theater of Kieran Akurik's fantastic um, play that, uh, that, that explores it, it, uh, topics that are, are very um, current today, uh, abortion and um, suicide and things like that looks, looks, at, looks at these things in a, in, a, in a sensitive and empathetic and caring and um, non-judgmental way, and that's playing at the Irish Rep um, through this Sunday. Uh, www. I've never done this in my life actually, so this is <laughs> this is awesome and, and strange. <laughs> www.kieranpatrickburn.com Beautiful. and at, at yeah, of course at real Kieran Burn on Twitter and Instagram. Because any other Kieran Burns a fake Kieran Burns. That's I mean, right. How arrogant is that? I'll take them out. Have it real take- Kieran Burns. <laughs> <laughs> I know so many Kieran Burns at home, and they're awesome, and they're more real than me, and they're amazing. And here I am on social media. Not on Instagram, the, they're not. <laughs> I'm the real one. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's so funny and silly. <laughs> I'll but, back you up. I'll back you up. You're my Kieran Burn. All right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and you're my Brian Balance, baby. That's right. Thank you so much, Brian. Of course. And. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the shows, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, Victor, Jim, and Chris. Your support means so, so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>